Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today's topic, uh, we are talking about baby birds. Now, I know that covers, you know, a, a span in birds' lives, but the, the inspiration for this topic is I get a lot of oh uh, postings and get questions and, and people talking that they saw this baby bird at their feeder or they saw this itty bitty baby uh, eagle or they saw. And, and so there's a big misconception out there that you can tell the age of a bird. And in this case, uh, we're going to start right here. We're going to go ahead and put this picture up. Now, these are freshly hatched bluebirds. And yes, these are truly babies. And then they're, 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 they're oh, probably 10 days old, uh, nine days old, something like that, because they've already got uh, a lot of their, their feathers, their pin feathers on them. They're not ready to fly. But yes, if you see this bird, you can truly say that's a baby bird. There's no doubt about it. But how about, look at this image. This is a bluebird that has freshly fledged from the nest. And this is an adult feeding the baby a, a mealworm. Now, can, can you tell size difference between that baby bird and that adult bird? Mm, it's it's pretty tough call. Um, their birds are about the same size and usually <laughs> the same size as the adults are on, when the day they leave their nest. And when you think about having to fly, uh, if you're, you know, you're taking your first flight, don't you want the biggest set of feathers that you can have to make that first flight with. So most young birds, you know, I hate to call them, we always call this the teenage phase right here because they grow so rapidly. But when you see these young birds, they are about the same size as the adult. Now, the plumage is very different. You notice the spots on, on the, the young one there. Uh, and sometimes you can see the little white down feathers poking through feathers here and there. They look disheveled looking. So um, the, the, the myth of you can tell baby birds by their size is what we're trying, I'm trying to get to here. And here's a couple other examples. Here is a northern mockingbird feeding a baby mockingbird, but that that mockingbird is basically the same size as the adult is feeding it, which is very, very common. Here's a Baltimore Oriole, an adult feeding a young, the young, and the young is every bit as big as the adult. So you, it, a lot of times the mistake is made when they see another, a smaller bird, usually it's a different species, and, and they may uh, think that that's a baby version of that, um, that one of the you know classic examples that, that actually this holds true for though is in waterfowl. Now, if you've watched my videos about the nesting styles, there's uh, altricial young and precocial young. Precocial young, like wood ducks here in this picture, and bobwhite quail and turkeys, uh, birds that nest on the ground, the birds, the babies stay in the eggs longer. So when they hatch, they're fully feathered. And they immediately are able to walk or swim. Uh, they can gather food, but they spent more time in the eggs. Whereas birds like that Baltimore Oriole and uh, the Northern Mockingbird that we were just looking at, those were helpless and uh, whenever they hatched out of the egg and the adults had to feed them. So they grow rather rapidly over a couple of weeks, get their feathers, and they're able to fly within like two weeks of hatching, which is an amazing accomplishment. But they need those the bigger feathers. Whereas these guys, things like the, the wood duck here with all these ducklings, is those birds were able to walk the day they came out of the eggs. And she uh, carries them. So you can tell a young wood duck from an adult because of that, because of the stage of their life. Um, so there's a little bit of difference there. And the killdeer is another example of that. You see these two little uh, kill, killdeer juvies running behind the adult there uh, because they are precocial. Like we said, they, they hatch on the ground and they're ready, they're ready to survive right away rather than having to grow to their flight stage very quickly. And it does take them a little longer to reach flight status, but they will. They will have the ability to fly, but it'll take them a while and they have to survive those very dangerous times on the ground. Now, one of the classic birds that I hear out of this a lot, of course, are eagles. And people, when they go see uh, birds, of uh, the eagles and stuff, like Squaw Creek, and, oh, sorry, Los Bluffs, National Wildlife Refuge, and they see several of them, um, they think, that a lot of times they'll see a red-tailed hawk, 
and they'll think that's a baby eagle, that it that's a young one that's flying around. Uh, but eagles actually are the great example of birds that are actually larger than the adults when they fly. What? What do you say, Mark? Yes. I'm, I, the largest set of feathers that a bald eagle will ever have in its life is the first set when they take their first flight. Again, what does that make sense, no sense that you want to have the biggest feathers you can have whenever you, you fly out of the nest the first time so you can make it somewhere? So look at the size of this. This is a, a, a a fledgling, a, a, a young eagle that's just ready to fly, and there's the adult beside it. Size difference, none. So they are the same size as the the, the eagles. And also in this great horned owl, sorry, that's a small image, but there's an adult uh, great horned owl and a young one sitting on a bird bath, of all things. Um, and the, the young one is just about as big as the adult uh, uh Great horned owl. And the other thing we have to remember is usually uh, in the bird world, the, adult, the males and the females are a different size. The females are usually larger in the raptor world. And so this could be a male uh, a juvenile here, and this could be an adult female. So the size difference would be explained by that. Now, one group of birds, or there's actually two that I can think of that, uh, that very much so that break the mold, and that are the dove species. This is a white-winged dove here on the right and a morning dove on the left, and a lot of times their babies are so big that they leave the nest or get pushed out of the nest early, and the same is true with American robins. We see this a lot with American robins. The young ones end up on the ground before they can fly, and they will be slightly smaller than the adults and both of these uh, groups of birds, and they'll they'll grow rather quickly once they're on the ground and they're being fed. And adults will still care for them uh, and feed them, and they'll they'll quickly get to the size of the adults. But they're a bird that you could actually look out there, and you see a, gr a group of morning doves at the, the nesting season, and you may see you know, smaller ones walking around with them that are just small, smaller versions of the adults, and those could be young. But that's not common. Like I say, mostly in the bird world, um, we're talking about the the babies being the same size and sometimes, like the eagle, even larger than the adults when they take their first flight. So that's a question that I thought should address because I get it a lot and about uh, seeing a smaller bird and it has to be a baby. Not necessarily, and usually not. Usually the they are about the same size as the adults. So they grow really fast, really fast, and the baby bird season is coming quickly here in the spring. So great idea for a program. Thanks for that. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.